Three things I'm always after in a mouthpiece. The three things I want the mouthpiece to enable me to do. That is playing tune, because let's face it, saxophone players have not got the greatest reputation for playing in tune. Play all the notes on the saxophone. So be able to play all the way down to low B flat and into the altissimo register easily. And the third thing is... <laughs> Hi there, welcome along to today's vlog. It's great that you're here. Please don't forget to hit a like and subscribe if you don't already. I'd really like to get to 15,000 subscribers, like tomorrow, but hey, let's get there one by one. Wanted to talk today about um, my relationship with Sios, Shape Your Own Sound and the mouthpieces I have with them. Now, I got an email about six years ago from the team at Sios that they were new to the game. Um, I'd seen their mouthpiece on this vlog, uh, where I played the biggest saxophone in the world, or at least a 3D printed saxophone mouthpiece in order to play that contrabass saxophone. And I've been interested in them, but hey, you know, I was playing on Vintage Links and everyone decent plays on a Vintage Link, Dan, don't you know that? I was kind of like, mm, I'll see, I mean, am I gonna stop playing my Vintage Link in order to play something new? Well, I did. Okay, and here's the story of why I did. So here is my tenor. Uh, this is my tenor mouthpiece. Here is my alto and my soprano. You can get them in your own colors. I got them in red, white, and blue. Not particularly because I wanted to go for some kind of like post-Brexit friendship with our French friends. Of course, red, white, and blue is also the colors of the Union flag as well, but uh, red for my football teams, white because it looked like Charlie Parker's mouthpiece, and blue, well, because, you know, blue was my favorite color at school, and um, it was all the houses I was in school. Do you have houses elsewhere in, uh, elsewhere in the world? Maybe you don't even have them in schools anymore. Um, anyway, back to my Sios mouthpiece. Why did I go for it? Well, I actually saw a good colleague of mine, a phenomenal saxophone player, T-Von Panicott. I really dig T-Von's playing, uh, and we're friends on Facebook, and he posted a picture of himself with President Clinton in a church service, and President Clinton being in awe of this coloured mouthpiece. And I thought, oh, that's those Sios guys. So I thought, do you know what? T-Von's giving him the thumbs up. Maybe they're pretty good, so I'll go back. and. I've got to say the team at Sios were wonderful to work with all the way through and I went back and we decided, you know, I said what I was playing, what I was looking for, uh, the three things I'm always after in a mouthpiece, the three things I want the mouthpiece to enable me to do, that is playing tune, because let's face it, saxophone players have not got the greatest reputation for playing in tune, play all the notes on the saxophone. So be able to play all the way down to low B flat and into the altissimo register easily. And the third thing is I wanted it to be easy to play. I didn't want to have to fight it all the time. With my link, I found that if I took two or three days off, I noticed it. If I took a week to two weeks off, which sometimes happened more now than it used to, then oh, I was back to square one again. That link really made me pay the price for not being able to be on it every day. So uh, Sios sent me a couple of prototypes backwards and forwards um, from Paris to Cambridge. And I'd like to say, when we had this vlog here, I went to Paris and we launched the Dan Forshaw signature range, which you can get for yourself. You can get different colours, you don't have to get it in red. You can even get it in black so people don't notice that you're playing a Sios mouthpiece. But you can get exactly the same mouthpiece that I've got here, 3D printed. Just click the link below, it's there. I'm, I've really, really enjoyed working with these Sios mouthpieces. Now, I want to just interdisperse this with some footage from my gig last Friday, uh, particularly on the tenor. And sadly, the camera didn't record everything I wanted to. But on my solo on Chelsea Bridge, I'll try and play a little bit for you in a moment. I was I was sort of experimenting, going from low B flat and low B. Those of you know that the first chord on tenor on Chelsea Bridge is a B flat minor major seven. Uh, sorry, it's a C minor major seven followed by a B flat minor major seven. Um, so I really wanted to play down low, really down low, low notes of the saxophone. And if you've been playing a sax for any length of time, or even if you've been playing a short time, you'll know that those low notes really often don't want to speak. They'll come out, they'll squeak. And what's happened often with me, particularly when I had the link, is you'll nail them in the practice room. But because you're feeling a little bit tense on stage, you can just kind of clamp down a little bit and it'll squeak, um, or it just won't speak the way you want it to. Have a listen. I can't show you the way I wanted to because it didn't record it, but here you go. <laughs> Now with my whoa, <laughs> now with my soprano mouthpiece that tries to run away from me, um, this has really come into its own since I switched and started using a Venn, the Dario Venn clarinet reed on it, bizarrely. That for me has been the, the deal breaker. It's been amazing. It is just, it's cutting through everything. Um, every note sounds again. I can get the top G, top A, top B, which on the soprano are often really hard to get. 
easy. No issue, they just come out. Obviously the sheepdogs around and about in the countryside got a bit worried, and they are quite high notes on Soprano. Uh, but yeah, I've really, really enjoyed it. I realise that it's very, a lot less of a market for Soprano mouthpieces, but you know, Sopranos are hard to get right. Um, you know, soprano saxophones are hard to get right. That's why I've been playing on the Yannick Osawa almost exclusively since the age of 16. All I've really ever played is Yannick Osawa sopranos because they just get it right. The alto, I mean, I, I say this in almost every vlog, I don't play a lot of alto. Um, I don't play this exclusively, I don't play this for playing classical gigs and a lot of my alto concerts are on, on classical so I'll use the Selma a concept a classical mouthpiece, but for anything else, particularly for teaching as well, this is the deal. It's the bee's knees. <laughs> Plenty of other examples of me playing my Sias mouthpieces on the vlog for over the last five years, so please head back to the channel youtube.com forward slash Dan Forshaw and just watch the videos that are going on there. One thing I haven't mentioned has been the mouthpiece shootouts, and some people go, oh, well, obviously, Dan, you're doing it that way. I didn't. You guys did blindfold testing, uh, particularly on the tenor mouthpiece shootout and also the alto one as well. Have a quick uh, search on my YouTube channel for those. They were blindfold tests voted by you guys when we did this mouthpiece shootout, and Remarkably, particularly on the tenor, given the field that was there, um, the Sios mouthpiece came out top in a blindfold test. So that says a lot, doesn't it, about how well Sios have created a mouthpiece that has shaped my own sound, as they have set out for their mission statement and their, uh, their mouthpieces. So I've really, really enjoyed working with Sios. I hope it's a relationship that continues for a long time. Um, I need to start looking at possibly a bass clarinet mouthpiece when I get around to a bass clarinet. I did have those of you who know, know I've been through a pretty rough time in the last five years. Um, I'm going to say more about that when the time is right, as I've said. But one thing I promised myself. Now, the problem is I've got a new MacBook Pro, a <laughs> new laptop, which has kind of taken the budget I was setting aside for that. Um, when I was talking to Lydia about it, we kind of like promised myself I was going to look at a C melody sax. Just for the laugh of it. Just to have a little token of... Um, of, of something nice to appreciate the last few years of, of what we've been through. Uh, but we'll see, that might still come. One thing I really want to do, and one thing that kind of got set in stone on the gig on Friday, was I've wanted to do a ballads album for a long time. I think if you go back to lockdown, I was talking about it during the first lockdown, which is now, gosh, four years ago now. Um, I'm just not sure, and if you've watched this far into the vlog, I know you're keen and I know you're probably going to get a copy of it, what I can't work out is, if we do a Kickstarter again, which is the most likely way of doing it, because I want to do it properly again, like we did with Jazz Vespers, go to a top London studio, get the best musicians I can get in to do the album with me, and then we'll record it and release it. But I'm not sure. Do you guys still want to buy a CD? I said in the last vlog about how one of the things I do is I ask people to buy a CD and then listen to it on streaming, because that way they've, they've paid me for, for, the, for the CD, as it were, or, or for the recording. And actually, I've had some kind of financial you know, recompense for what happens with streaming, because I'm being honest with you, with streaming I earn nothing. Um, you know, the royalty checks are abysmal. So I obviously need to release it on streaming to a certain extent, or do I? I don't know. Would you guys appreciate the exclusivity of a CD? Do you want me to go back to vinyl? Do you want me to just do it as, you know, kind of like a re digital release only? Do you think that should be? Anyway, just put it in the comments. You guys will know what other people are doing more than I'm doing. I said before, Apple Music is what I use, and as a student of the music, it's phenomenal. As a music lecturer now, it's phenomenal, because I have create, curated, created, curated, hundreds of playlists now for students. You can get them all, they're all on Apple Music if you follow me over there, uh, and you can go through that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. 
we need to get some more vlog ideas in. So again, any comments, any vlogs you'd like me to do. Uh, I'm gonna do one about the new desk setup. I'll just quickly show you there. So, ooh, that's all gone off there. I need to do a new desktop setup. The iMac has gone, we've gone MacBook Pro. Um, to sort of replace the iMac, which was getting a bit too old. So yeah, lots of other things to do, but thank you very much for watching. I'll see you really soon. Don't forget, give me some comments and some ideas about this Balz album. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.